Finding, finding. Welcome or welcome back to Fizz Vibe. I'm Vivian Camille and today you're gonna come train with me. We're gonna hone in on the warm up and cool down part of my training. So if you look at videos on how to warm up for your run, there are people that are laying down on the ground doing the world's greatest stretch. I'm in the desert, I'm at the trailhead. On a day like today when I don't have all the time in the world to devote to my run, I kind of condense it down and really focus on what's important. Instead of seeing it really as a warm up, it's more of like activation. Especially for somebody like me who's had hip and knee problems, I'm really focused on activating my glutes and opening up these hips to get them ready for the run. So I'm hopeful that today you'll take away like a realistic warm up and a realistic cool down. If you have a job that's anything other than professional runner that has all the time in the world to devote to um, your warm up. So we're gonna start with a resistance band. This is something you can keep in your car or in your pack or anything. It's light and easy, but this is one of the most effective glute activation exercises I've found. Simply place the band around the front of your foot. Point the toes out of it and walk side to side. You should feel this in the glutes almost immediately. I do this about 10 to 20 times each side. For these glute pulses, angle the foot out a bit once again and pulse up and down to exhaustion. Leg swings are pretty straightforward. Find something to hold on to and swing away. I do about 10 on each side, front and back as well. I think this is called the walking calf stretch, but they feel amazing on sore hamstrings as well. I do about five hip openers, front and back on each side as well, and a dynamic figure four. Lastly, I shake out the kinks, get ready to go, and then we go. That wasn't so bad, was it? I've got my water, my pack, and some new kicks. Woo! So we're gonna take these for a trail spin and break them in. This is Brown Mountain. It's um, maybe got a little less than a thousand feet of climbing. Nice little five mile loop out here on the west side of Tucson. Let's do it. Finding, finding, GPS, GPS, GPS. I actually haven't run out here since I like first moved to Tucson, so pretty stoked to revisit Brown Mountain. I always call it Bear Mountain. That's wrong. All right, peace out. because of the like rocky climbing that's happening that's what these boys were designed for so I think today we're is a good day for breaking them in on the trails they were built for so far so good love them. they've got a pretty sweet gator built into them which also acts as kind of an ankle locking mechanism not in a bad way but just you know as you would tape your leg with KT tape kind of gives you like tiny bit of extra support there for this these rocky um, climbs and steep ascents of course it protects your foot from getting a lot of these rocks in your shoe and then it's got a, some pretty sweet lugs to aggressively climb well too aggressive if you're trying to warm up with a band oh shoot. they popped my band twice 
a little sharp right out of the box. <laughs> me focus on keeping those glutes activated as I climb and descend on this trail. It's basically teaching my body what muscles need to be used on this run. As runners, we're pretty quad dominated and so we miss out on using and optimizing that glute muscle. It's a huge muscle that has a lot of power if we can get the body to activate and utilize it. It's uh, basically summer in Tucson, it's hot. How does all get out? After any run, a cool down is important. Again, cool down's kind of misleading. In this case scenario, it's hot. So we need to like actually sit in any form of shade we can find, which is these tiny shrubs, and get a little bit of actual cool down, feel the breeze, and like cool the body temp down. But a cool down is generally some stretching, rolling, massage gun. The point of a cool down is to reduce lactic acid buildup reduce the inflammation in the body, um, start the recovery, and also bring that heart rate back down. Often the cool down is important if you're doing speed work. Um, instead of going from like all this high intensity, abruptly stopping, you have a little bit of cool down. So if you're doing like a track workout, this can translate to do like a running cool down to kind of bring the body back into this balance of we're done and kind of create those rhythms. However, in a trail run, a cool down, especially after like an easy day, isn't as important. But the way I kind of schedule it into my run, post run, is I give myself 15 or so minutes, sometimes it's 10, but I take that time to elevate my legs up on the car, um, do a little bit of static stretching, and actually physically cool off before I get into my car so I don't just destroy my car seats with nasty sweat. For the warm-up, we're doing primarily dynamic stretches, so those are moving stretches. For the cool down, I'm gonna be doing primarily static stretches. So in the desert, like a yoga mat doesn't really do anything for you. So my posh trick and bougie trick is to get myself a rug this rug was like 10 bucks at a flea market, so I don't really care about it. See this thickness here? The spikes can't really get through and it creates like an actual cushion, not just a thin layer. So I can actually do, you take my shoes off, take a nap. Not really, I don't usually do that. I have had to do that once. Oh no, it was real sick last year. We did this stretch at the beginning in our warm up, but it was a dynamic stretch. I was standing up we just saw that. Okay, I don't have to redo it. Now we're doing the static stretch. I usually do about 20 seconds holding this. And this is again just gonna like create that opening in the hip area, create some more mobility there. And with the muscles warm like this, you can get a deeper stretch. Study after study has not really proven that stretching is gonna improve your speed or really enhance any of your performance gains. I have found that it feels best for me to stretch and I, I do believe that it's helped in some forms of injury prevention. Um, again, there's not a whole lot of science to back up static stretching. A lot of runners do not do it and they think it's a waste of time and that's a okay. If it makes you feel better not to stretch, 
that is what I recommend. You have to listen to your body when you're training in this kind of way. Um, but for me, I like to take a couple minutes after my run to just kind of stretch some things out, whatever I'm feeling. If I remember to bring my massage gun, I do a little bit of massage gunning. Because what I've found when I have a busy day ahead, oh, this is, this is a good one. I <laughs> it always hurts. I find that if I don't schedule my mobility and massage gun and stuff near or around my run on a busy day like today, it often won't get done. So I try to set it, when I think about my run in the day, I add an extra five to 10 minutes before the run and five to 10 minutes after the run to do a brief warm up and cool down to really maximize the efficiency of my run. Hope you learned something today. If nothing else, get yourself a $10 flea market rug and it'll change your life. I really take these things everywhere. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Happy, happy trails, y'all. Bye.